So we've looked at the effect of aggregate demand shocks in the model, aggregate supply shocks. Let's now look at, at the effect of monetary policy. Um, so let's say um, the central bank decides to raise its nominal interest rate, what's going to happen? And in particular, this would allow us to evaluate the possibilities that um, the Fed is able to do a soft landing. So you know, there are a lot of discussions now of whether a soft landing is possible or not. So what the Fed means with soft landing is that they're going to raise rates, that's going to, uh, you know, I guess, reduce market tightness. Um, you know, as the, Fed, the Fed doesn't really use the word market tightness, but they talk about reducing number of vacancies or reducing the ratio between um, vacancies and job seekers, which is uh, just the market tightness. Um, and then the question is what's going to happen to unemployment? And of course, you know, the Fed would like to be able to reduce market tightness without raising unemployment. Nobody wants to raise unemployment. Um, but yeah, we'll see that in our model, that's not possible. Um, we'll see that when monetary policy tightens, that's a negative aggregate demand shock, you're moving along your aggregate supply, and when tightness falls, you always raise unemployment. Um, so soft lending, you know, a strict soft lending, that's impossible in our model. Um, and then we'll try to quantify a bit like how much un we can expect the unemployment rate to increase for a certain decrease in, uh, in market tightness. And we'll see, in fact, we can compute the elasticity of an employment to market tightness. So it, it's, uh, it's very easy to see that. We can also translate that in an elasticity of an employment with respect to vacancy. So we'll be able to evaluate like how much we think the unemployment rate will increase in response to a tightening in the model. Um, so um, let's uh, see how in the model, uh, monetary policy affects you know, output tightness, uh, unemployment, and so on. Uh, so monetary policy, Uh, operates through uh, the aggregate demand curve in the model, through the AD curve. So you remember that the expression for the AD curve is YD of theta, it's delta minus the read interest rate, but that's where, uh, that's where the nominal interest rate shows up. So it's delta minus the nominal interest rate plus the inflation rate, because of course, uh, here we use the fact that the real rate is just the nominal rate minus the inflation rate. Uh, okay, and then this is always divided by the marginal utility of wealth. Then uh, we have an epsilon here from the utility function, one over one plus tau of theta, the recruiting wage to the power of epsilon minus one. Okay, so that's the expression for aggregate demand, and so we can see uh, we can see how uh, monetary policy operates. So when monetary policy tightens, the nominal interest rate goes up, and so you can see here the nominal interest rate shows up here. So when the nominal interest rate is higher, that's going to depress aggregate demand. So the AD curve is uh, depressed. Okay. Um, so the effects are going to be exactly the same as for a negative aggregate demand shock. And so we know already uh, what's going to happen Oops. We know already what's going to happen when um, when monetary policy tightens because we've already studied a negative aggregate demand shock. So we know already that uh, tightness theta is going to fall. So indeed, you know, right now the discussion, the Fed thinks that you know they they want to reduce inflation and they hope that by cooling. The economy by reducing market tightness, you'll be able to reduce inflation. Although, you know, there is, at least in the past 30 years, this hasn't really been the case. Like inflation hasn't really responded at all to movement in tightness either. Inflation hasn't go up when the market was tight, and inflation hasn't really fallen when the market was slack. So, you know, um, but anyways, they're hoping to reduce inflation by reducing tightness. Uh, so here in the model, that's exactly what will happen. When you raise the nominal interest rate, tightness is going to fall. Um, 
but output when tightness falls output y is going to uh, to fall the employment level we also know that the employment level is going to drop and in particular we also know that the unemployment rate unemployment rate u because tightness is going to fall the unemployment rate u is necessarily going to go up uh, so what this is telling us is that uh, you know qualitatively uh, it, you know it's not possible to have uh, you know in theory it's not possible to have a soft landing where tightness falls and the unemployment rate doesn't respond. If we define a soft landing as less tightness and the same unemployment rate. Uh, so not possible to have what we could call like a a strict soft landing that is a reduction in tightness without any effect on unemployment. Uh, so tightness lower, but use the same. So that's not possible uh, to have, strictly speaking, a soft landing. Uh, the unemployment rate will necessarily go up. Uh, so we can illustrate that with our uh, standard diagram that we've used before, just to see like what's happening when the Fed tightens. So as usual, I'm going to put my market tightness on the vertical axis. I put output here, I have my zero here. I have my aggregate supply curve here, and then aggregate demand curve here. So this is yd of theta, this is ys of theta. Here we have our solution. Here we have output. Here we have tightness. and you know, here because we, have, we care about unemployment. So here we have the idle capacity, but that's proportional here uh, to the unemployment rate. It's proportional to the unemployment rate. So by looking at how idle capacity varies, we'll know what happens to unemployment. Okay, so uh, here we're looking at the effect of a uh, an increase in the nominal interest rate, monetary policy tightening. So we know that that's going to depress the aggregate demand. We've just showed that. So the aggregate demand is going to be something like this. So that's the effect on the aggregate demand of the monetary policy tightening. Uh, so what happens now in the model, well, we have a new solution. We've moved along the aggregate supply curve. In this new solution, we have lower output. We have lower tightness. So indeed, you know, monetary policy tightening uh, manages to reduce the tightness of the market, but this comes with less uh, lower output. And, you know, the new unemployment right here is much larger. Well, it's larger than before. It, it depends on uh, how much larger will depend on how much the tightness has been reduced. Uh, but we can see here that we have uh, more idle capacity, more unemployment. So that's why strict, you know, strict soft landing is not possible. Uh, because we are moving along our aggregate uh, supply curve. Now, an argument that uh, some people make is that, well, you know, maybe we can't have a strict soft landing, maybe unemployment will go up, but it's not going to go up by much. And the reason that uh, people, especially at the Fed, have put forward is that the beverage curve is uh, very steep when you have low unemployment. And so if you have a very steep beverage curve, uh, as you reduce vacancy, the unemployment rate is not going to increase a lot. So this is exactly something that we have in the model. Our model here, as you can see, uh, uh, gives us a convex aggregate supply curve. And in this model, the aggregate supply curve comes directly from the beverage curve. Um, and so we see that it's convex. So when we have you know, low output, the aggregate supply curve tends to be flat. And then as output gets closer to capacity, um, we have capacity here, that's AH. Once you get closer to capacity, the aggregate supply curve becomes very steep. 
Um, so indeed, it's very true that if you try to cool your economy uh, in this region, say, and you try to cool it here, it's very true that as you reduce tightness, um, you won't increase unemployment a lot because the aggregate supply curve is very uh, is very steep. Whereas if you reduce if you try to cool the economy here, the, you know, at a spot where you have more unemployment, um, the aggregate supply curve is, is flatter, and therefore, uh, to have the same reduction in tightness, you need to increase unemployment, unemployment uh, more. So here, it's uh, you know, this argument qualitatively is very is very valid. Uh, our model uh, produces a the model produces uh, you know. A convex S curve here, um, and in fact, all, you know, in these matching frameworks, you know, all aggregate supply curves are always convex. Um, so here you produce a convex aggregate supply curve, and therefore, indeed, if you do a reduction when you're closer to capacity, you will have uh, here, you will have uh, a small. If you're in a very tight economy, you have a small effect on you. Uh, whereas, if you are in a slack economy, like further down here, here you'll have a larger effect on you. And in fact, you know, that's just a more general property of matching model. Uh, as we'll see later in the course, uh, policy, the multipliers of government policies are systematically dependent on slack. Uh, they are systematically slack dependent. Uh, and so that's something that uh, I've worked on in the past, so for instance, I've showed that the effect of, say, public employment is always larger in bad times than in good times. So public employment is more desirable in bad times when you have a slack market. And the reason is exactly that uh, labor supply is convex. Um, you can also show that the effect of government spending is more effective in bad times than good times. And again, the reason is that the aggregate supply is convex, exactly like we show here. So that's going to be the same here. The effect of tightening, uh, like the effect of stimulating the economy by monetary policy, it's going to be larger in bad times and good times because, again, exactly like government spending, exactly like public employment, uh, loosening monetary policy or tightening monetary policy acts on the aggregate demand. So you're always moving on the aggregate supply. So when you move on the aggregate supply, and the aggregate supply is very flat when you have a lot of slack, that allows you to reduce unemployment a lot without affecting tightness much. Whereas if you act on the aggregate demand when you're in an economy that's very tight, you're on the steep part of the aggregate supply curve, and so you have big effects on tightness, but small effects on the unemployment rate. So that's always true for all policies. Um, so indeed, uh, you may have not a strict soft lending, but a, you, know, you could say like a loose soft lending, where indeed you cut tightness, but you don't increase unemployment, unemployment much. Uh, so we, that's uh, completely possible. So loose soft landing is possible um, because the S curve is convex. So increase in unemployment rate U uh, is small. You know, when uh, the tightness theta is high. Okay, so that's completely possible. Uh, but in fact, the, the model, you know, because we have this model, we can in fact learn much more. In fact, from the model, I can compute the elasticity of the unemployment rate to uh, tightness along the aggregate supply curve so that I can, I can figure out, you know, if the Fed wants to cut tightness, say, in half, because Labor market tightness is around two these days, and the Fed has talked for you know uh, has talked about trying to bring the labor market tightness down from two to one, um, which is the level where it was before the pandemic. And in fact, we can show that the tightness of one is roughly efficient. So the Fed, we can say, aims to cut the labor market tightness by 50%. But thanks to our model, we can actually compute the elasticity of unemployment to tightness, and then so we can figure out. What will you know? What is the effect uh, on the unemployment rate that we expect, you know, for realistic calibration of the aggregate supply curve? So it's true that the aggregate supply curve is convex, but it's not vertical. So there'll be an increase in unemployment. 
chunks to the structure of the model, we can compute the increase in unemployment that we expect. So what is that expected increase in unemployment? Well, it's pretty easy. Uh, so we know that the unemployment rate U is just a function of uh, the market tightness. So it's lambda divided by lambda plus f of theta. Lambda, the job separation rate, f of theta, the job finding rate, and f of theta, so the, because here we have a Cobb Douglas function, f of theta, we know that it's mu theta 1 minus theta, where, so here, this is our job separation rate. Okay, and this is uh, our job finding rate. And this eta, which is going to play an important role, that's what we call the matching elasticity. So the elasticity of the matching function with respect to unemployment. Okay. Uh, and you know, we, we also kind of know the values of these things. So this is roughly like 3% per month in the US. That's maybe 60% per month in the US and the matching elasticity, that's roughly 0 0.5 in the US. Okay, so we know all these things now. So let's compute the elasticity uh, of the unemployment rate with respect to tightness. So we compute the elasticity of u with respect to theta. That's because it's going to be you know, required to figure out the effect of on unemployment. So uh, we have d log u d log theta using the expression above. So what is it? So uh, we see that here we have the composition of, of two functions. So all right, so d log u, d log theta, it's going to be, so it's going to be minus uh, f of theta divided by lambda plus f of theta times d log f d log theta. So the minus comes because the theta shows up in the denominator. Here we then we take the elasticity of a sum, which is going to be, you know, the weighted uh, average of the elasticity. So elasticity of lambda with respect to theta is at zero. So I just take the elasticity of f of theta with respect to theta. So I have minus f of theta, lambda plus f of theta times d log f d log theta. Now, that's minus, so f of theta divided by lambda plus f of theta, that's just one minus the unemployment rate. Uh, and d log f, d log uh, theta, this we know it's just one minus eta from the expression of f of theta with Cobb Douglas. So that's what we have, okay? So d log u, d log theta, it's, so it's negative, of course, when you, uh, reduce tightness, you increase the unemployment rate. So because you have this minus sign here, you know that strictly speaking, a soft landing is not possible. Uh, minus one minus u, one minus eta. Okay, so that's a key result here. Oops. And so, uh, so indeed, here you see the argument about you know the convexity of the aggregate supply curve. You can see that if u is very high, this elasticity, uh, if u is very large, uh, so this is our elasticity and. So it's very easy, the elasticity of the unemployment rate with respect to tightness along the aggregate supply curve, it only depends on the prevailing unemployment rate and uh, eta. But now, so currently you have an unemployment rate that is roughly uh, 4%. We know in the US eta, so there are many, many studies that estimate the matching elasticity. Uh, we know that eta is roughly 0.5. There is a very nice uh, survey by Petrongolo, Barbara Petrongolo, and uh, Chris Pisarides, uh, 2001, uh, that tell us that, you know, overall we think that eta is about 0.5. So, if we use this calibration 
for the US labor market. And the US economy, what we get is that D log U, D log theta is about minus 0 0.96 times 0 0.5. Uh, so, you know, it's about 0 0.5. So that's a key elasticity. Okay, so what's, what does that mean uh, for the effect of monetary policy? Okay, uh, so if the Fed, that's something that Powell had discussed in its, in its uh, press briefing. So if the Fed wants uh, to bring labor market tightness data from two to one, so two, this is kind of roughly what it's today. It's slightly below two, but not much. One, this is like the pre-pandemic level. Plus, actually, it turns out that the tightness of one is also efficient in the US. Um, I have a paper with um, Emmanuel Saez, a recent paper that shows this. Um, so what's going to happen to the unemployment rate if the Fed wants to bring tightness from two to one? Uh, so that means that tightness falls by 50% from 2 to 1. So unemployment rate U is going to uh, increase by 50% uh, times the elasticity of the unemployment rate with respect to tightness, which is 0 0.5, equal 25%. Okay, so the unemployment rate, we can expect it to increase by 25%. And, you know, unemployment rate is close to 4% today. So U is going to, uh, we can expect U uh, to increase from 4% to 1.25 times 4%, which is 5%. Okay, uh, so what, what we learned from this analysis uh, is that a strict soft lending is not possible, but you know, if what the Fed does is to raise a rate just uh, to bring tightness from two to one, the effect on unemployment shouldn't be terrible uh, what we should expect is that the unemployment increases to uh, 5% um, once tightness has reached a level of 1. Um, so, you know, that's, what's, that's the beauty of having a model that helps you understand the effect of monetary policy on unemployment, which typical monetary models don't do because they don't have unemployment. Once you have a model like this, you can actually compute analytically the expected effects calibrate because we have a lot of evidence on how the labor market behave and get an estimate of what could happen. And so here, based on that, my best guess is that the unemployment rate is going to increase by about one percentage point from 4% to 5% uh, when tightness goes from uh, 2 to 1. Now, of course, if tightness falls lower uh, than that, then we'll have a higher increase in uh, the unemployment rate. And of course, if other negative shocks occur, you know, things could be, uh, you know, things could be worse. If good developments happen, things could be better. But if there are no shocks hitting the economy, the sole effect of monetary policy should be roughly to, uh, to bring the unemployment up by about one percentage point.